Welcome to Cancer Treatment Updates, where treatment options for cancer are discussed openly and demystified. Welcome to the next episode of Cancer Treatment Updates. I'm your host, Francisco Javier Esteva. I'm a medical oncologist specialized in the treatment of breast cancer. The focus of today's episode uh, will be on the role of CDK4-6 inhibitors in the treatment of early stage breast cancer. There are three types of CDK4-6 inhibitors. These are medications or drugs that block these enzymes called cyclin-dependent kinase 4 or cyclin-dependent kinase 6. That's why we call it CDK4-6 inhibitors. There are three of these medications that are currently approved by the US FDA, palbocyclib, also known as Ibrans, ribocyclib, known as Kiskali, and abemocyclib, known as Persenio. These three medications in combination with endocrine therapy have been shown to improve disease-free survival, in some cases overall survival, in patients with metastatic breast cancer that is estrogen or progesterone receptor positive and HER2 negative. So hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative breast cancer. The standard of care for these patients in the front line, the first line of treatment for metastatic disease when the disease is spread into other organs was endocrine therapy. Endocrine therapies include tamoxifen, uh, anastrozole, letrozole, fulvestran, many types of hormonal manipulations. Clinical trials compared this type of medications like an aromatase inhibitor, like letrozole or anastrozole, with or without one of these CDK46 inhibitors, palbocyclic, ribocyclic, abemocyclic, all these trials have shown improvements in outcomes when we combine both approaches, the hormone therapy and CDK46 inhibitor therapy. In early stage breast cancer, when these medications were tested in patients with stage one, two, or three without spreading of breast cancer to other organs, what we call early stage, in the adjuvant setting, so after surgery, uh, when patients receive endocrine therapy for five years, sometimes longer, in that situation, these, med- these CDK4-6 inhibitors were also tested. The study, one of the major studies with palbocyclic was called PALAS. That did not show a significant improvement um, in, in disease-free survival, meaning patients without recurrence, in early-stage breast cancer. With ribocyclic, there was a, a recent study presented called NATALIE, a study where patients got uh, a significant benefit by adding ribocyclic to endocrine therapy. We'll talk more about that in a, in a minute. And lastly, Versenio or abemocyclic is the one that was, it's currently FDA approved in early 2024. That's the, the one we have approved by the FDA for patients with early stage breast cancer at high risk who received abemocyclic in combination with endocrine therapy. Those patients did much better than patients treated with endocrine therapy alone. So let me discuss a little bit more in detail the abemocyclib study called Monarch E and the ribocyclib study called Natalie, because those are the ones that we're going to be using in patients with early stage breast cancer um, in the near future. As I mentioned, the only one that is approved today is abemocyclib for early stage breast cancer that is hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative. And that was based on a study called Monarch E. In that study, more than 5,600 patients were randomized to the best endocrine therapy for the adjuvant setting or the same endocrine therapy with abemocyclib. There were two cohorts Two groups of patients, one at very high risk with patients with more positive, more than four positive nodes in the axilla, or if they had uh, less than um, four positive nodes, involvement of the axilla and lymph nodes, but one to three positive nodes, they had to have large tumors, more than five centimeter tumors, or grade three, meaning highly proliferative tumors. And then there was another cohort in patients at lower risk with one to three positive nodes with um, 
not such a high proliferative tumors and smaller tumors and they had to have an elevation of also of a proliferative marker called K67 or KI67. The FDA initially approved uh, abemacycline in patients at high risk based on these clinical features, high tumor size, lymph node involvement, but also had to have this elevation of K67 in the tumor. That subsequently was removed, so K67 is not necessary to um, select patients for abemacycline in the adjuvant setting. And that is because it's what, what we call a very good prognostic marker, not such a good predictive marker. It means it works both um, whether the K67 is high or low, those patients tend to benefit in addition to endocrine therapy. So that is for patients at very high risk of recurrence. Um, the treatment was given for two years, while endocrine therapy normally is given for five years or even 10 years sometimes and there was a significant benefit. In December 2023, at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, there was an update and patients continued to do well. We also saw this year, uh, actually in 2023, at the ASCO meeting and an update in San Antonio in December. An update on the Natalie study, which is the study with ribocycline. In that study, patients with high-risk breast cancer that was hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative were also randomized to standard best endocrine therapy compared to the same endocrine therapy with ribocycline. Now, ribocycline or Kiskali had been approved in patients with metastatic breast cancer because it improved overall survival when combined with endocrine therapy, such as fulvestrant, for example, or an aromatase inhibitor, there were significant improvements in disease-free survival. So the rationale was there to test it in patients with early stage breast cancer. Now, one of the differences between this trial, the Natalie study with Kiskali, and the study with Monarch E that we talked about with Versenio in the same type of patients, is that the Natalie study with ribocycline included patients who had not such a high risk. For example, patients also, the patients are very high risk with involvement of the lymph nodes, but also patients with no negative breast cancer. So, in the first report of the Natalie study, a significant improvement in disease-free survival for all patients, and in a recent update, more significant improvement in patients with positive nodes. Not so much, a slight improvement in patients with negative nodes, so there we're going to have to be a little bit more selective. An interesting aspect of the Natalie study with ribocycline or Kiskali is that they used a slightly lower dose that was normally uh, approved uh, and used in patients with metastatic disease. Instead of 600 milligrams per day, they used 400 milligrams per day, which is slightly lower than what we use in patients with metastasis, but it still was an effective therapy and it was very well tolerated. So in 2024, we're uh, waiting for the FDA and other regulatory agencies to decide how this medication will be approved and how we're going to use it in patients at, uh, with early stage hormone receptor positive HER2 negative breast cancer, where we'll have two options, abemacycline in combination with endocrine therapy or ribocycline, Kiskali in patients at high risk, patients at slightly lower risk, and so on. And that's where we need to discuss with every patient whether this is indicated or not. So what are the side effects of these medications? Any uh, uh, drug, any medication we use in cancer patients is likely to have some uh, side effects, some adverse effects. Um, and with the CDK46 inhibitors, the most common side effects for all of them is that they may lower your blood counts. So we monitor blood counts regularly to ensure they don't fall uh, too much. If patients develop fever or infections, we need to uh, stop it and um, treat the patient with antibiotics, but that's not very common. Some differences between the CDK46 inhibitors, uh, for example, with uh, Kiskali or ribocycline, we need to do an EKG before, before we start the treatment because there have been cases of rare cases of arrhythmia, so we monitor patients with EKGs for 
the first few weeks or months. And, with, and we may see this lowering in, in blood counts, maybe some fatigue. So in general, it's very well tolerated. With abemacyclib, one of the unique uh, adverse events we see is diarrhea. It's quite common. Patients get used to it usually after the first month, but it can also be uh, treated prophylactically with Imodium of uh, some of these uh, medications. Palbocyclib is very well tolerated, also has the effect on the blood counts, but again, it's not a medication we normally use in patients with early stage breast cancer. So in summary, uh, for patients with uh, early stage hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative breast cancer at high risk of recurrence, in addition to hormone therapy, we can offer them abemacyclib for two years or hopefully ribocyclib if and when it's approved by um, the FDA, which will be given for three years. In the Monarch E study, abemacyclib was given for two years. In the Natalie study, ribocyclib or Xcali was given for three years. So these are medications that can improve the outcome, decrease the risk of recurrence, and improve the uh, uh, amount of the number of patients uh, we can cure with early stage breast cancer. So this is all uh, good news for, um, for our patients. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel and come back for new episodes of Cancer Keeping Updates.